What's good everyone? Welcome back to my Vet Med related YouTube channel and welcome if you're new. I hope you guys have been staying safe during this pandemic and dealing with the circumstances well. Uh, so I'm making this video because I haven't posted in a while and also I have some big news to share with you guys and that is that I'll be starting vet school this August, August 12th. So next Wednesday uh, is our orientation day. Um, and so pretty much before starting vet school, I took a gap year. So I graduated from FIU in spring 2019. I applied that uh, VEMCAST cycle uh, starting late May and in September. And so now it's when I will be starting school. So I wanna share ways in which I've stayed an active learner. So I'm gonna show you guys different ways I've stayed constantly learning because you can't expect school to teach you everything, you know? And come the Navel the Navali exam, there's gonna be questions where they ask you cases about reptiles or avian breeds and maybe you didn't haven't worked with them. So these are ways in which I'm preparing myself not only for that exam but just for my future career, which is to become a veterinarian and help as many animals in a wide uh, range of species as I can. So let's take a look. But before I continue with the rest of the video, I left out one very important detail in the clip before, uh, and that is which veterinary school I'll be attending come this fall. So the school of veterinary medicine that I chose my acceptance from is St. George's University in Grenada, West Indies. Although the first term is gonna be online distance learning, uh, because Grenada right now has zero cases and there's a lot right now in the United States, uh, especially here where I live, it's the epicenter of the pandemic. Um, so it's understandable, but at the end of the day, what matters is that they found a way for us to continue our education and for us to start vet school. Vet school has been always a big dream of mine and I can't believe the time has finally come for me to start vet school. Uh, so that being said, we could start and continue the rest of the video. So the first way I've been staying an active learner, especially now that we can be really volunteering out at places because of the pandemic, has been watching educational veterinary shows on TV. So my personal favorite is the incredible Dr. Paul. Shout out Jan Paul. Um, he's a vet located in Michigan, Central Michigan. And there's an episode, a new episode every Thursday and Sunday, I believe. So I set it to record on my DVR and whenever I'm home and I have free time, I turn it on, sit down, pull up my laptop, start pressing play and you can rewind, fast forward. I have the captions on uh, so I could take no time. So I have this document where I have the case and in the case I write why the patient came in and everything the client told the doctor about what's going on with their animal. Uh, then underneath I put diagnosis where I write how the vet diagnosed the animal and what it got diagnosed with. And lastly, treatment where it shows and it says how the vet treated the animal, what medication it got, um, what they did to cure the animal. And obviously on the show, they're not always gonna tell you what medicine they use, but you can more or less figure out what antibiotic injection they gave. Like if it's white, you know most likely that was penicillin. So there's plenty of Nat Geo Wild shows that are veterinary related, uh, or probably on other channels like uh, Animal Planet. So other ones I would say to watch would be Dr. Oakley, Yukon Vet. You got Dr. K's Exotic Animals. If you're looking to get into exotics, that's a great show. And Dr. T actually used to work with her. You also got Critter Fixers and so on. And also one that's not on here would be uh, The Vet Life. That's another one that I have plenty of on my DVR. The second way, and I think the most easiest way that I've been able to actively learn is through Instagram. Everyone's always on their phone, sometimes always on that app. Uh, so I follow a lot of vet accounts, either from actual vets, vet students, or just accounts dedicated to veterinary medicine. And whenever I find a post that's interesting, all I simply do is I either screenshot it or most of the time I save it as a draft. And then later on, I will transfer that to a Word document on my laptop and just take notes on it or memorize it. Now number three, uh, Facebook also, I'm swirling down my homepage and I see so many different articles or news reports 
um, different things like that. And again, you could hit save. Uh, I'll show you guys how I do that right now. And it's as simple as that. And whenever you have free time, again, you could revisit them, take notes on them. So you don't have them on Facebook. You actually have them in an easy accessible document. So one of my favorite ways I've learned uh, through this year that I've had off has 100% been this online course from the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies, which is a veterinary school in Edinburgh, Scotland. So this course is easily accessible to anyone. Uh, you go to this website, courseera.org or coursera.org. You look up EdiVet, do you have what it takes to be a veterinarian? And you join for free. Uh, it tells you when the enrollment is available. So as of right now, it starts August 6th, so you could start today. And pretty much when I did that course, um, I took notes on everything. And at the end, you have a quiz to move on to the following week. So week one was basic animal care and husbandry. And you have different vocabulary. And it also gives you a lecture on cattle, sheep, horses, dogs. Week two was focused on histology and pathology, and the following lecture was on uh, anatomy. So both these courses are going to be in a term one, at least for me, my curriculum at SGU. Then week three was veterinary professional skills and the business aspect of it. We had week four, an introduction to clinical skills. So how to talk to a client, uh, when they come in to, for their appointment and you learn about signal mint, which is right here. Okay. Week five was the past, present and future of veterinary medicine. So it's focused around the history of it and where it is now. So those uh, five weeks uh, were very educational and I 100% recommend if you have free time to do this and it will prep you for vet school for any um, future vet student out there definitely get your hands on this I think it's available whenever and forever I think another thing I've been doing in my camera roll uh, when I was volunteering a lot going to different um, animal clinics animal hospitals shelters there is a lot of posters that they hang around the clinic or in the back like about dosages or um, ways to use different medicines and all that. So I've been taking a lot of pictures of those that I've had in my camera roll and now I finally have the time to transfer them to my laptop and again organize them in a way where you can understand them rather than just having it sitting on your camera roll. And yeah I mean we have our camera 24-7 it's in our pocket it's our phone so it's very easy to Take picture of information that you could later on transfer and fully digest and understand which is going to help us in the future you never know and last but not least like the video i'm making right now youtube is a great platform to learn so much there's so many videos on there you could search something like pets 101 and so many videos will come out you could subscribe to vet students out there vets out there um and learn you know it's all about you taking it upon yourself to be like hey i'm not gonna wait for school to teach me this or school might not even teach me this so let me go ahead and learn it myself you know the more you know the better knowledge is power especially in this career itself where the information is ever evolving it's important to keep up to date with that and learn as much as you can because if you're trying to be a vet that's going to help any species and every species or help any patient uh you can you got to put in the work you got to learn um, and just be committed to it and when you're passionate about it it just makes it a lot more enjoyable a lot more easy uh, so comment down below with ways that you guys have actively learned or are active learners uh, and yeah like comment and subscribe i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and i'll see you in the next one